って。<笑>
Ugh. Crazy Taxi, Jet Set Radio, and Nights into Dreams. All games I've heard the titles of, and at the very least am interested in, but eh. Hey man, Nights into Dreams has a pretty badass trailer though. Made you look. And finally, Space Channel 5 Part 2. Ugh. You know, normally I'd be somewhat disappointed that Steam only has Part 2 and not Part 1, but man, I'm not even gonna act like I want more of this. Get it away from me, I don't care. F Space Channel 5. So, yeah, while all these games do make me feel nostalgic in one way or another, Sega Bass Fishing was always where it was at for me. And I won't lie, before I bought this bundle, I was eyeballing Sega Bass Fishing. Like, I knew that that would be the one I was gonna play first. I barely gave a shit about Crazy Taxi, and to this very day, Bass Fishing is still the only game from this bundle that I've played. Haven't even installed the other ones. <laughs> So I played it, and over time I ended up accumulating over 10 hours on this game, which doesn't sound like a lot, but oh me oh my, the people around me sure were concerned about how enthusiastic I was about this fishing game. I mean, I guess you could say I was pretty hooked. <laughs> Oh, it was just a great game to play while doing other things. It was perfect for Discord calls. The conversations made for great side distractions I could enjoy in the background while focusing on the fishing. Eventually, I sort of just stopped caring though, moved on to Super Meat Boy, which is... You know, a lot better. But for some ungodly reason, I recently decided to add 24 more hours to my bass fishing playtime, and, uh... My opinions of this thing have since changed. I, I kinda hate this game now. So, since I'm stuck on this dog shit lake and don't wanna go fishing, what better of a thing to do than to go fishing? Sega style. Haha, <laughs> what do you think of that, Pete? Uh, Flish, I, uh... I, I f***ed. You f***ed? Yeah, I accidentally brought bear traps instead of a fishing pole. Alright, so as I said before, fishing is sh if you enjoy fishing, then you enjoy sh essentially. I'll admit, I do have a weird fondness for the fishing aesthetic, just the feeling of being out in the middle of god knows where, with a wooden lodge type building on one side and a piss green lake on the other. It's nostalgic for me, it just reminds me of freedom and peace and whatever else, but the actual act of fishing... BORING! I've done it maybe twice in my life many years ago, and from my experience, when you go fishing, one of two things happens. Either you don't catch any fish, which is boring, or you do catch fish, only to throw most of them back in the water anyways, which is still boring and a waste of everyone's time. I'd imagine it's pretty hard to turn fishing into an exciting gaming experience, but that's what's so great about video games. They can turn boring activities into fun times, so does Sega Bass Fishing do that? Sega Bass Fishing really goes for realism. It takes the idea of fishing being a boring waste of time and freaking nails it and knocks it out of the park. Alright, I'm being a little bit harsh, but don't be fooled. This game can get pretty intense sometimes, as made abundantly clear by the opening cutscene. Guys, brace yourselves. We're in for a wild ride here. It's so intense, dude. Okay, so this guy casts out his fishing line, the bass notices it, and now it's in hot pursuit. Holy crap, look at him go. After six or seven minutes of watching this bass chase down this lure, it freaking swallows the camera. Holy shit, he's not playing around. That camera got devoured. That shit's gone. How did they get this footage back? After that ordeal, an epic showdown occurs until eventually the fish leaps out of the water and abruptly... There's the menu. Oh man, that intro wasn't that great, but like the rest of the game, it's charming, and it does sort of demonstrate what this game brings to the table. Sega Bass Fishing isn't just a fishing simulator, it's a goddamn eSport. When I play this game, it never feels like I'm here to have a relaxing day out on the lake, it feels like I'm on a quest to eradicate every bass in the county. Sega basically decided to take fishing and give it the extreme sports vibe, as in we are not on the lake to chill and maybe reel in a few fish, we freaking scour these lakes for bass, and when we find them, we beat the sh** out of them. Man, this is putting me in a real cannibal mood. Let's just dive into it and see if this thing lives up to the hype. It, it, it doesn't. So in Sega Bass Fishing, your goal, and, and this really caught me off guard the first time, is to catch some basses. Most modes put you under a short time limit, and within that time limit, your job is to catch not as many fish as possible, but as much weight in fish as possible. So when you throw out your hook, you're going to want to keep your eyes open for the most gargantuan fat-ass fish you can possibly catch to make that weight total as hefty as it can be. Now you can catch small fish if you really want to, but that's a waste of time, and if you do so, you'll make a grown man start pouting like a whiny toddler. No! Did you cry about it? Fishing in this game goes a little something like this. So basically... Uh, j just wait, it gets better. Bite it. So after picking a lure, the first thing you do is choose a casting point, and man, the way this works confused the hell out of me when I first started playing this game. I was expecting to be able to freely move this circle anywhere I wanted on the water, but no, you're restricted to the borders of the lake. So I then figured that after choosing a point, I'd see a strength meter appear that I could use to determine how far I'd throw my lure into the lake, but instead, no, you, you have to throw the lure at the absolute border of the lake, which isn't what people do when they fish. Like, wouldn't it make more sense to be able to throw the hook in the middle of the water? where the fish would be. If any fishing enthusiasts out there are watching this, please tell me. If you were fishing in this area right now, 
Would you throw your hook right here? Does that seem like a good idea? Whatever, man. All the magic slash anti-magic happens once the lure lands in the water. At this point, one of two things can happen. One, Yeah, more often than not, there will be straight up zero fish in the lake, or if there are fish, they just don't give a sh**. But then, we have the other possibility, when there finally is a fish dumb enough to bite your lure. Fish. He's right, that's a fish! When the word fish appears on the screen, that means it's time to f*** a fish up. We've got two things to keep track of now, the first thing being this tension meter. Those basses are not gonna be happy that you yanked a hook through their face, so they're gonna wanna break free, and in doing so, they're gonna make the line tension go all wibbly wobbly. To combat this, you gotta start and stop reeling at the right times. If this thing gets too high, that's a sign that you need to calm the frick down and stop reeling for a bit. If it gets too slow, stop being a lazy shit and start reeling. You've gotta find a nice balance that keeps this thing right in the middle. The other thing to worry about is how you move the rod. This guy constantly harasses you with which direction he wants you to move the rod in. You're generally supposed supposed to move the rod in such a way that makes the bass face the boat at all times, but it can be pretty hard to tell where the boat is in relation to the fish sometimes, so just freaking spazzing out usually does the trick, as long as you're at least somewhat trying to follow what this crazy old man says. If you manage to keep everything in check until the bass reaches your boat, bada bing, bada boom, we kill the fish. We celebrate by awkwardly standing still while holding the fish for way too long, and then the fish's weight gets added to our total, and we go for another one. If you suck too hard at anything I previously mentioned, you'll lose your fish, like a dumbass, and we'll have to try again. And the bigger the bass, the more of a sweat you'll have to be as everything gets super out of control and stressful and uh, And that is how you go bass fishing Sega style. And it might seem pretty easy, but man, these big basses can put up a freaking fight, dude. I play this using an Xbox 360 controller, and I wouldn't be surprised if the neighbors could hear me playing this considering how loud my fishing gets. Now I could have switched to keyboard controls to avoid this problem, but first of all, screw the neighbors, and second of all, just look at this control screen. These controls just look really janky, and they also include the use of the arrow keys. The arrow keys, and why are they on the top left of the controls diagram? That is not where the arrow keys are. The devs of this game clearly have no fucking idea what a keyboard even is, so playing with one just doesn't seem like a good idea. The Xbox 360 controller just feels right, as it so often does. You've got the analog triggers for reeling the lure in, the sticks for rod jerking, it doesn't feel like you're using a fucking keyboard to go fishing, and also, this controller has special art on the diagram, and it just looks amazing. It gives my nose another whiff of that nostalgic fishing aesthetic, I want this controller. The Dreamcast version of this game also has a fishing rod controller thingy available, so hey, if you want to play the most authentic way, this only cost 122 bucks at the local Walmart, plus the current price of a Sega Dreamcast and a copy of Sega Bass Fishing for the Dreamcast. What a steal! That's pretty much all there is to fishing in Sega Bass Fishing. It's pretty simple as long as you can get the controls down. Of course, whether you succeed or not is almost entirely dependent on how the fish decide to behave, and my god, I I'm gonna go off on this soon, mark my words. For now, let's have a happy time. We've got three modes to try out, all having you put your fishing skills to the test, and very very slightly different ways, very, very slightly. Up first is the arcade mode. Now, when I first came across Sega Bass Fishing, I kind of thought it was just a stupid Dreamcast game, but it turns out this thing actually started in arcades. Like, arcades would have actual Sega Bass Fishing arcade machines. When I found out that this was an arcade game back then, I was freaking flabbergasted. Look at this little birthday boy playing Sega Bass Fishing at his birthday bash. This guy only had one wish in mind for his birthday, and by god he's getting it. And you know what? I want to get it too. Let's go! Where is the Sega Bass Fishing Machine? Where is Get Bass? Is this Get Bass? That's not Get Bass. Yeah. Is this Get Bass? That's a fucking minion. Some Harpoon Lagoon. Any basses in here? Any basses? Nah, it's just squids. <laughs> where is Sega Bass Fishing? Motorcycle. Hey, where's Get Bass at? These bootleg ass looking football players know where Sega Bass Fishing's at. <laughs> Cracked out chicken, know where sick of bass fishing's at. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, I found it. Big bass wheel. Let's get bass. I got a bite. Alright, we're gonna get some bass. Let's do it. Okay, now get ready. Alright. Get the bass. Get the bass. And we got a Hey, that's pretty nice there. That's 30 that's a, that's a big one. I'm winning the amateur tournament with that. That sucks. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> bananas. That was bananas. Is it even going to give me tickets? Yeah, it did. 
Yeah, it looks like the Sega Bass Fishing Arcade machines just aren't really around anymore, which, woe is me, am I right? Luckily though, we can play the entirety of what the arcade game had to offer right here in arcade mode. This mode has three rounds, and in each round you've got to catch a certain amount of bass weight. Round 1, catch 11 pounds. Round 2, catch 13 pounds. And round 3, catch 15 pounds, with each round taking place in a different fishing area. All of these rounds must be completed within two minutes, and if you fail, well, you get laughed at by the probably hundreds of people waiting in line behind you to play this stupid sh**. This time limit is pretty strict, and the only way to increase it is by getting time bonuses. Basically, anytime you hook a fish, you get some seconds added to your timer, regardless of whether you actually catch them or not. This forces you to find a nice balance between quantity and quality. You want to catch big bass to ensure you meet the weight requirement on time, but you might also want to go for some smaller, easier bass to add some time to your limit. Minor issue though, this mode's difficulty curve is flat as hell. The time limit makes things challenging, yes, but the game barely gets harder as you progress through the round. Increasing the weight requirement by 2 pounds each stage barely does anything. Like, in each round, all I have to do to advance is catch three 5-pounders, which are relatively easy to catch. Makes it feel like I'm kinda just doing the same thing three times in a row. But, once you clear all three of those rounds, you come face to face with the final challenge. We're at the palace, and we have one goal, and one goal only. Catch a super bass! What the f*** is a super bass? To this day, I still don't know, but basically, Catch a big ass fish. Only one is needed, it's just gotta be a big freaking honker, and you've only got one minute. If you manage to get your greasy hands on a super bass, that's it. You're a bass legend, and you're rewarded with the credit sequence. And man, this is just freaking emotional. <laughs> for real though, watching this credit sequence back, it's kinda sad. It's like this fish is looking for its friends and family, but they're nowhere to be found because you killed them all while fishing. He's just all alone looking around for anyone while this sad music plays, and him swimming away at the end is like him realizing there's no hope in giving up. Man winning never felt so great! Now of course, as an arcade game, something has to happen when your timer runs out. If you're playing this at an actual arcade and embarrass yourself in front of everybody by losing, it's game over unless you want to sacrifice another quarter to continue where you left off. But here in the Steam version, we don't need any stupid quarters to keep playing, we can completely deny the losing process and just continue, for free, just like that. Yeah, that completely invalidates any of the progress I make from this point forward, but man, who wants to frantically dig their fingers through their wallet searching for coins just to continue their Sega bass fishing playthrough? Screw that, I'll continue for free 8,000 times, I'm not paying Sega sh**. And that is what I call the Sega Bass Fishing Arcade mode, and honestly, it's the best part of the game. It's fast paced, it's easy to learn, and it can be satisfying to win. It's actually a pretty good fit for arcades too. It's not really worth playing more than a few times, but it's still a nice 5 minute or so bite sized experience. Though that does make it feel a bit too short for a game I downloaded on my PC. So what if we turn that bite sized fast paced fun from the arcade game and stretch it out into a 24 hour long boring ass piece of work of a campaign? That's where original mode comes in! Odd name choice considering this game originated in arcades, and the version from arcades is here as its own mode. But whatever, this is the mode that adds the most meat to the package. It pretty much just takes the arcade game and expands, and by that I mean it took me roughly 300 times as long to complete this mode as it did to complete the arcade mode. That is not an exaggeration, I have over a full day's worth of Sega Bass fishing footage at my disposal, please help me. Original mode takes the idea of arcade mode and adds a story to it. We play as a man whose life goal is to win some fishing tournaments. <laughs> to fulfill this very cool and not sad but very cool life goal, we find ourselves entering a series of four tournaments, each one harder than the last, on a quest to become the fishing god. I now get to choose what name appears on this guy's ID card. I went ahead and named him and hashtag exclamation point period exclamation point and hashtag and 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 just to fuck with them. We begin with the Amateur Tournament, a title that makes it so that regardless of whether you win or fail, you feel like a fucking loser. This tournament comes with a set of rules, and here, I'll allow you to read them for yourself. Like power. You got that? Great, let's go! Yeah, they give you freaking dilly squat time to read this wall of text, so I pretty much had no clue what the fuck was going on at any given moment. To sum it up, the goal of this tournament is to catch as much weight in basses as humanly possible before the day ends. The top 10 weight catchers get to move on to the next tournament, while those who don't make the top 10 are disqualified and promptly executed. We arrive at the lodge area for the first stage of the tournament, now let's do some freaking fishing! Alright, look man, I'm not claiming to be the second coming of Jordan Lee, world-renowned Bassmaster Classic Champion of 2017 or anything, but I don't feel like it's my fault that I suck so hard at this mode at first. Remember what I said about the fish earlier, how their behavior often dictates how well you'll do when you play? Well, 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 in arcade mode, they seem pretty nice honestly. Some duds here and there, but for the most part, they make way for a satisfying little time. And heck, even sometimes in this mode, they're alright and things go pretty well. But more often than not, Things don't go well. Things go bad, real bad. A majority of the time, these freaking fish 
are my worst nightmare. These freaking fish, these freaking basses are assholes. I swear to God, they're just fucking with me half the time. Their minds transcend the game world. They know they're pissing me off, they can see it in my face, and they freaking revel in it. All right, so a lot of the basses think it's funny to taunt me by just staring at the lure. Just staring at it. They'll even follow it around, never taking their eyes off it, but they're not interested. They have no intention of actually biting it. They'll just watch the lure until I reel it all the way back, but just refuse to bite the freaking thing. But then I remember, wait, these are some dumbass animals we're working with here. Their minds probably haven't even processed the fact that there's something dangling in front of their face. Except for the fact that we got assholes like this, who will literally swim up to the lure and freaking pretend to bite it, then swim away. Like, what, what the hell are you doing? Like, are you actually trying to bite it and missing, or are you legitimately just screwing with me? Is that what you're doing? And let's not forget that these fish have the attention span of like 12 seconds, so even those that are legitimately interested in your lure, will forget it exists after a while and just leave. And when an interested fish becomes uninterested, the camera changes to this really depressing angle that makes it ever so clear that you're a failure who can't catch a bass worth sh**. Oh man, but wait, these basses have even more up their sleeves. Now, as I said, no matter the mode you're playing, Heavy fish reign supreme. You want heavy fish, so as such, you will seek out heavy fish. Well, for some reason, it seems to be a common occurrence for me to find a heavy fish who ends up being legitimately interested in my bait, and as they start swimming up, ready to take the bite, some tiny ass worthless bitch swoops in at the literal last second, takes the lure, and completely screws over my shot at that record breaking catch. And to make matters worse, you know, Usually when you hook a fish in this game, they want to break free from your line, so they put up a fight. They try to make it hard for you to get them to your boat, you know. They want to live, makes sense. And when you hook a tiny fish that isn't worth a lot, you want to let them break free. You don't want to waste valuable time trying to catch a fish that won't add much value to your score, so you'll play dumb and try to let them off easy. But for some reason, whenever a tiny, unwanted fish forces itself onto your hook, it makes an active effort not to break free. That fish will cling onto your hook as hard as it possibly can. They actively discourage you from letting them free. They freaking force you to put in the time and effort it takes to catch them with the goal of wasting as much of your time as possible and preventing you from catching a big fish that'll actually help you win the tournament. Like right here, I didn't freaking want this fish, so I wasn't controlling anything. I tried letting the tension get too loose, I didn't even fight the bass, and yet, the fish doesn't leave. He won't let me let him leave. He's forcing me to play his stupid game, do this whole balancing act all the way back to the boat, catch him, get told he's a three ounce waste of time, throw him back in, and then redo the whole process just to get the big bass, who is no longer interested because he just isn't. He just doesn't care anymore. He has better things to do now, apparently. And then when the big fish finally are interested and I finally manage to get one on my hook with no interruptions, it's usually when the time's too close to running out and I don't end up having enough to catch it anyways. <sighs> and finally, the basses just kind of find it funny to just leave. Like, all of them just disappear to god knows where halfway through the round. Like, where did you all go? Sometimes they'll go to an area and it'll just be empty for no reason. Why even let me select this area if it's already been determined that no one's gonna be there? Yeah, these fish know how to piss me off and not a good way either. The behavior of the fish seems to flip-flop a lot. One hour, the fish will act like normal fish, then I'll go to the bathroom or something, and while I'm there, the fish will gather out a pentagram to devise a sick, twisted plan to enact on me when I return. It's just a frickin' routine at this point. I'm probably making this sound like a way bigger problem than it is, though. It's just frustrating when it does happen, because again, you're under a time limit. And when your ability to progress through this game is solely dependent on whether the fish decide to cooperate with you or not, it can get pretty annoying. These frustrating moments can honestly be funny sometimes, but when it happens over and over and over again, it starts feeling freaking stupid. At the end of the day, all I want to do is just meet the requirements to progress to the next stage. When these basses pull all the crazy stunts I mentioned, it can be hard to do that, and I've had to restart the first tournament constantly because of stupid stuff like this. The amateur tournament as a whole takes an hour of fishing time, and by the end of it, I kid you not, I had only caught 4 basses for a total of 12 pounds. Ended up in 34th place out of 40 participants. That is miserable. I genuinely can't explain why that is. Sometimes I get good attempts, sometimes they're horrible. The only thing I could think of is that the lures I'm choosing are screwing me over somehow. As I said before, you're given the option to choose which lure to use, and apparently stuff like time of day, weather, and water temperature can affect which lure is best to use, but I've really never paid much attention to that at all. It took me a long while to find out how and when I was supposed to use each of the lures. I assumed the basses were being lunatics because I was using lures incorrectly, and I wanted to fix it, but my god is it an episode of Blue's Clues trying to figure out the proper way to use these things. It took me a lot of digging. I looked everywhere. The manual that came included with the game, a fan-made comprehensive guide on Steam, the game's store page. All of these places were more so focused on dropping vague hints about when certain lures should be used, rather than just flat out listing all the lures and the ideal conditions for using them. Then I found out that 
if you wait long enough on the menu screen, a super horrible, ugly-ass tutorial sequence appears, attempting to teach you a thing or two about these lures. Dude, this game already has some ugly moments, but this menu takes the cake. It takes 50 cakes. It's horrendous. You've got an eye-shredding, bright yellow background with how to use the lures period tiled and copy-pasted all over the screen. You've got unappealing gradients with sloppy text written on them. You've got an awkward 3D model of a hand holding a fishing rod that's supposed to demonstrate the hand movements you make while using a particular lure, followed by a demonstration of what the lure is supposed to look like if used correctly. Okay, so... They do know that we're not actually using a fishing rod to control this game, right? So, so this whole hand demonstration thing literally means nothing to anyone watching it. Also, this is an ugly ass screen. So yeah, while a handful of the lures are demonstrated here, it doesn't really help at all, and even if it did give meaningful information, I wouldn't remember it. It's hidden in the title screen, and each lure has different properties. I'm not gonna remember all this by the time I get to fishing. Eventually, I found out that the best way to know which lure to use is through the tackle box menu, which basically provides the list of lures you've unlocked alongside how and when to use them, exactly as I wanted. I didn't find out about this until I'd already beaten the game. But that's okay, cause a little secret from fisherman to fisherman here, None of this actually matters like that at all. They make it seem way more complicated than it actually is. They make it seem like everything matters. The weather, the time of day, the water temperature, but in reality, f all those things. None of it means anything of value. Most of these lures are fine at any time. Most of them feel the exact same to use. I'm sure they have little minute differences, but I don't care enough to test them all to find out. Arcade mode also labels certain lures as easy or difficult and why the hell would you ever go out of your way to choose a difficult lure? Like I want to catch fish, so Easy lure. I guess they just expect that anyone who plays this game already enjoys fishing in the real world, so they'll already know everything they need to know about the lures, how and when to use them, the fishing conditions, all that jazz. And as such, they probably don't feel the need to explain anything in great detail, but for the people who already know what they're doing when it comes to fishing, why play this game instead of actually going fishing? I don't give a fuck's ass about fishing, and this game isn't making it any easier to get into it if I wanted to. It feels like this game was made for people who already like fishing, so why the hell am I playing this? Honestly, just choose a main lure and stick with it. None of this extra stuff matters at all, really. So after six godforsaken hours, I finally just barely squeezed my way into the qualifications to advance to the next tournament. I just want to remind you that this amateur tournament is split into five stages, each one lasting 12 minutes each. With each second in real time translating to one in-game minute, that means that this guy cannot spends 12 hours fishing per day, five days a week. Does this guy not have a job or a family? Did he literally leave his entire life behind in the name of the Sega Bass Fishing Association Amateur Tournament? Lock this guy up, he's insane! Luckily though, following the Amateur Tournament is the Challenge Tournament, which I vastly prefer over the Amateur Tournament for being 60% shorter. It's only two stages long instead of five, but that didn't stop me from taking another six hours to clear it. The challenge from this tournament comes from the fact that now, bass that weigh 3 pounds or less will be entirely discarded from your weight total, which renders any time you spend on catching them wasted. That really wasn't an issue for me though, as after 6 hours of playing this game, I sort of learned to avoid smaller fish anyways, so this didn't change that much. The professional tournament comes next, with 5 stages again, yay! In this tournament, only the top 5 heaviest fish we catch contours our score. If we catch a fish that doesn't crack our top 5, it gets discarded entirely. That sounds like a pretty rough limitation, but I honestly feel like it makes things way easier. You're given an hour of fishing time, and with this rule in effect, it really doesn't even matter how many bass you catch, you just need to catch 5 decently sized ones to win, which is bound to happen within an hour of fishing. I freaking obliterated the professional tournament in one go, I got first place in every stage which made me way too proud. If you manage to pull the amazing stun I just did, you get another reward. The best reward. You get the final lure, the one that tears the lake up so good you'll have all the fishermen breaking into your home trying to get a piece of the action. The lure for all the marbles. Sonic! <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo. Yeah, buddy! <coughs> Sonic of War. <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog Fish War. <laughs> eat it. Eat, eat Sonic. Eat him. Eat him! <laughs> yeah, this got me very excited. <laughs> Too bad I decided not to use it for the rest of the campaign, lol. The final tournament series is the Master Classic Tournament Series. Same deal as the previous one, but a bit harder in a few ways. Doesn't matter though, because I absolutely dominated this one too. And finally, after 17 hours of suffering through this freaking mode, we're treated to a lovely celebration scene, followed by credits. <laughs> what the f <laughs> Why are they cardboard? They are literally cardboard. <laughs> What the hell? Who's that? Why is he there? He didn't win. Who's that? Who's that? 
Where the f*** are you going? It doesn't look like he's making any progress towards assassination right now. In fact, he's just surrounded by mountains. There's no, like, dock anywhere. How's he gonna escape this lake? So that's the original mode in all its non-glory. Maybe it's just the fact that it took me 12 hours of playtime to reach the halfway point, but man, this mode is just slow and repetitive and frustrating and not the greatest time. The fish are cracked out, the lures are jank, and the overall gameplay just isn't that engaging most of the time. At best, I'll catch a bunch of fish one after another and feel super satisfied watching that weight counter go up and up and up. But at worst, and more commonly, I'll be frustrated that nothing's happening. Or when stuff does happen, it goes wrong somehow, or just simply isn't good enough to advance to the next stage. I found myself having to restart a lot, because I knew that what I had wouldn't be good enough to advance and continuing would just be a waste of time. I also feel like 12 minutes is just a really long time to have to commit to fishing per stage. I often check the timer just desperately wanting it to be over because I just wasn't having a lot of fun. Again, when things go well, it's great. I love this game when things go well, but that wasn't the majority of the time for me. This mode is definitely the meat of the game, and it can be fun, but man, it can just be so slow and so frustrating at times. But hey, one could argue that that makes this game way more realistic, as that's pretty much what fishing is in a nutshell, right? Overall, I am so glad it's over. I got the achievements I needed, and I'm ready to get the hell out of here. The last thing we've got in this mode is the diary. The music that plays in here is pretty freaking upbeat and exciting, considering this is the place where most people usually pour out their deepest, darkest emotions. I was kind of hoping to open this thing up and read about this guy's emotional trauma, but nah, it's just a catalog of all the fish I've caught. So it's my emotional trauma. This guy's life revolves around fishing so hard he has a fishing diary. It's kind of sad. Hey, speaking of kind of sad, peas. What, what are, can we leave now? <sighs> God damn, again? This is getting old, man. I'm starting to regret this big time. Oh, well then let's GTFO. I'm, I'm ready, let's hit the road. Uh, come on, man. This is the first time in ages that I'm breaking away from my obsession. I'm really trying to enjoy this. If you really hate fishing that much, at least try to take in the beautiful weather. Oh, looks like we got a tsunami warning in effect for the next 12 days. Man, f*** this. I'm not trying to die on this raggedy ass boat. Can we go home? It's a goddamn tsunami warning. <laughs> oh no, I paid for four hours. We're gonna use our four hours. Now take a bear trap and get fishing, Sega boy. <laughs> and all that remains now is practice mode. This is where you go if you want to have the most relaxing fishing experience possible with this game. You can select any of the areas you've been to in the original mode, choose the time of day and the weather, and then use any of the lures you've unlocked to just go fishing. No goal, no time limit, it's an all-you-can-fish buffet. Just keep going until you're bored. I'm bored. Yeah, this mode's not interesting in the slightest. I'm glad it's here, but it's not important at all. If you just freaking love the fishing in this game so much that you just have to do some more of it in an uninterrupted, untimed environment, this is the mode for you. But guess what? It's not the mode for me. Personally, I just used this mode to grind for the Catch 500 Basses achievement since it was the last one I needed. But hey, I never got a chance to talk about the actual locations in this game, and this mode lets me view them all on demand, so here's a quick review of all eight of them. We've got two lakes, Lake Paradise and Lake Crystal Dew, each one with four sublocations called areas. Lake Paradise starts at the lodge area. I said it once and I'll say it again, I just love the fishing aesthetic, and this area dumps a ton of that all over the place. I want to break into one of these cabins just to get a good whiff of that fresh cabin smell. This is also my main fishing spot when fishing at Lake Paradise. It's split into three neat little sections, making fishing a breeze. The Cape area is the least freaking interesting area known to man. It's just a freaking wall of trees. If I wanted to see trees so badly, I'd go to literally any other map. They all have trees. This isn't unique. But wait, we've got a special guest. Rusty metal cage platform thing. This area sucks. Inlet area. All right, man, you can call this lake paradise all you want, but that's not going to disguise the fact that this area looks like a place where toxic waste gets disposed of. I do like fishing here, though. It's usually my go-to area in this lake when lodge area starts feeling empty. Cape area just never seems to have enough basses for my liking, and also it's boring. And acting as somewhat of a final boss type area for lake paradise, we've got the palace area. Now, normally when I think of the word palace, I imagine a big magical castle, just a grand and happy place. So in Sega Bass Fishing, yeah, this place is a bit of a flooded, run-down dump room that's infested with bats. Sega like Bass Fishing. This place is supposed to have the biggest and baddest basses around, and while I've encountered some fat asses here, this place is usually freaking empty when I show up, or there's like one or two stupid sized fish I don't care about. Moving on to Lake Crystal Dew, Bridge Area. This area sucks, dude. I like the music, but other than that, good god. The water's just too deep, and the camera never seems to give me any helpful angles, which makes finding fish in this area a freaking pain. And then there's this shallow area, which is a lot easier to see stuff in, but surprise, surprise, barely any fish show up to this place. It's too shallow. They want to be in the deep end. This area frustrates me like no other, and it's not even that nice looking of an area to make up for that. We're just under a bridge, that's it. 
minutes. This is where the freaking trolls live, not where you want to go fishing. Get me the hell out of here. Reed area. I, I like this one, mostly because it's where my favorite piece of music from the soundtrack plays. Visually, it's nothing remarkable, but it's the go-to area for me when I fish at Lake Crystal Dew. It seems to be pretty popular with the fish, so I just throw the line down the middle and totally ruin their day. Imagine being the guy who lives in this house. How does he go shopping for food? Cave area. The music in this area sounds like it belongs in a Mario Kart Wii shortcut compilation. Not that I'm complaining. The area itself, while I do like the way it looks in this picture, it's kind of boring to fish in. It's just a wall of stone covered in trees, and the actual cave part? It's just a hole. There's nothing interesting to see here. And you don't want to throw your rod in there either because of how freaking far away it is. If you end up hooking a fish inside this cave, you're gonna have to fight that thing for potentially over 60 feet when the average area only has you fight a bass for like 25 feet tops. And finally, Falls area, the final boss stage of Lake Crystal Dew. I never really did much fishing here simply because it has the same problem as the cave area. Most of the map has you throwing your rod super far away, which is just counterproductive. It also just seems pretty empty most of the time. However, that being said, this area has a nice vibe. The waterfalls, the calming music, the deer that just disappears into the woods, it's just nice. Trust me man, after playing this game for long enough, you start to feel like you're in an apocalyptic world where the only organisms alive are you and bass. But no, occasionally you'll see some ducks, birds, turtles, and man would I give to be able to stick my hook through one of these things for once instead of being forced to catch bass for eternity. Well, I just got done shitting on slash admiring all the areas, now I want to take some time to admire the general presentation of this game, and man, I've said it before, but this game just looks and sounds great, I love it. This game is a bit too old for me to experience it as a kid, but it still makes me super nostalgic. I also love the sound design. The voice acting is... Hey! Not great, but I'm glad it's here. It's just dumb and charming. Though for some reason, if you decide to play as the female character instead of the male, like, half of her voice lines will still be in the male's voice. This one's huge! Also... Peace! The fish. Overall though, love the voice acting, and Snapple Man did a great job putting together the soundtrack for this game. Alright, okay, who is Snapple Man? No one in this game's credits is called Snapple Man. Snapple Man isn't the name of the YouTube channel I got these songs from. Who the hell is Snapple Man? Well, that's gonna keep me up at night, but regardless, the soundtrack in this game is genuinely pleasant. In a lot of cases, it's honestly way better than it has any right to be, considering this is Sega Bass Fishing. God, this is just the results screen. Just pure nostalgia all over the place, even for a game I never even experienced when I was young. It looks and sounds exactly how I hoped it would. But you know what doesn't look or sound how I hoped it would? The Wii version! For some reason, Sega Bass Fishing on the Wii has the most content out of any of the versions, so it's a good thing I also brought my Wii out on this boat. Hell yeah, man, let's get her plugged in and check out this exclusive content. Sega Bass Fishing. This game feels kind of weird. It feels like a bootleg version of the Sega Bass Fishing I'm used to. The voice acting is different, and also worse. He just doesn't ever seem as excited over trivial bullshit as the normal narrator. Okay, average size. Yeah, he does not want to be here. Also, what is that? I mean, I might as well just dump off this freaking boat right now. This guy became an ugly f in the Wii version, god damn. But at least the rest of the game looks pretty good. The menus are different, but still charming, and there are a ton of new areas to fish in, all of which look genuinely pretty nice. The country area takes place around actual civilization and not in the middle of butt f nowhere, that's good to see. The dam area, damn this area feels pathetic to fish in. It feels like I ended up here by mistake and have no choice but to just deal with it and fish here. The castle area. Enjoy your fishing. So this is probably some sort of torture dungeon. Nothing new, I mean I've been playing Sega Bass Fishing for 24 hours so it can't be too much worse. Can only play this map at night for some reason. It looks pretty cool but like... Ugh. The brook area, very nice, probably my favorite Wii location. It's kinda cramped, but I like that about it. It feels safe and homey out here. Let's just hope a grizzly bear doesn't show up and try to rip my head off. The marsh area is a pretty generic one, nothing too special, but the canal area is pretty neat. Bunch of windmills. There's a nice town nearby and this sign warns us of this drawbridge. Even though it's placed after the drawbridge, so like, anyone who passes this sign has already passed the drawbridge. Who's the mayor of this town? Someone assassinate them. And the final new area? The park area. It's like the bridge area from the original game, but they actually made it pleasant to fish in. The Wii version also added some extra detail to old areas, like the reed area has sheep now, the falls area has a nice bridge, the cave from cave area is less mysterious and kinda sad now, and the bridge area still sucks ass. Fishing can also take place in different seasons now, and while I'm sure someone out there cares about this, it's all going in one eye and out the other for me, man. It does offer a bit more visual variety for each area, but this just feels like another thing to make picking a lure more confusing. Yeah, I'm not paying attention to any of that. Spring and summer literally look identical, as do autumn and winter. Also, why would you ever choose to go fishing during the winter? It's winter, you're about to be fishing in a frozen ass lake. And of course, as a Wii game, there's gotta be some motion control bullshit at play here. There are never any indicators telling you how to control this pile of junk, 
so you kind of just have to figure it out on your own. From what I've gathered, you throw the lure by shaking the Wii Remote, reel in with B, and do a little jiggle with A, and when the fish bites, you just go freaking crazy. Isn't this whole motion control gimmick supposed to make games feel more immersive? Who the hell goes fishing like this? I'm pretty sure you're supposed to shake the remote in the proper directions to steer the rod correctly, but I was able to catch the fish just by spazzing out for two minutes with no rhyme or reason. Hey, look at that, my knocking is on point, I did that on purpose. Catching fish in this version is still no fun. If anything, it's worse now because you actually have to move your arms and shit just to do it. And the tournaments in this game are now 10 stages long, holy god no. Luckily though, if you're satisfied with what you've got before the time runs out, you can just weigh in early to continue to the next stage immediately. Yeah, you know what, I'm feeling pretty good about this. How did I still beat this many people? <laughs> and finally, nature trip mode. Basically it's practice mode, but no music plays, just the ambience of nature. Fun stuff. And that is the extra content the Wii version provides. Visually, it looks a lot better, but in return, it kind of lacks that nostalgic charm I bought the game for in the first place. Content-wise, the definitive version. Control-wise, garbage. And that was Sega Bass Fishing. God damn. A video this long about a game no one cares about. That was worth my time. Overall, yeah, I don't think I'll ever be touching this game again. As someone who came into this game not liking fishing, I come out of this game with even more hatred for the activity than I thought was even possible. It can get really boring, and there will be prolonged moments where deadass nothing happens. And then, when things start picking up, so does the bass's thirst for my anger. I feel like a lot of this game is just too dependent on luck. You never know when the bass will decide to let you win or screw you over. I still do believe that this is an okay game to play in the background, not something to devote your undivided attention to for 35 hours. Just put this on while talking on Discord or something. Personally, I just listen to podcasts while getting all this footage. It's not worth playing for any more than like 10 minutes. Just play the arcade mode. It's quick, it's not frustrating, and it gives you your fill. If you just love fishing so much that playing this thing for 10 hours sounds appealing to you, why not just go fishing for real? Of course, this game also has sequels, meaning, that's right, this is a franchise, ladies and gents. I can't say I'll necessarily be playing these games ever, but they exist, that's for sure. There's also Sega Bass Fishing of the Dead, a game where you can shoot those bitch-ass fishes to death. Holy sh**, where do I get this game? Oh, goddammit. Alright, f*** the f*** out of this. I'm done. Pete, what's going on? How, how are we doing? Uh, not good. Dude, it looks like we hit an iceberg. Hit an I Pete, we're on a lake. I true. So what's your point? So there's no iceberg? I mean, what even iceberg are you talking about? Dude, look closer. What? Oh, f***. Yeah. So, so what does this mean? Does this mean we're gonna sink? Uh, ask again later. Oh god, oh god, oh god, I wasn't ready for this. I just wanted to go home. That's all I wanted. Oh, well, we're about to go home, all right. If by home you mean heaven or hell, maybe. Prob probably hell. Ugh. Wait. I'm a fish. I can literally just breathe. Oh, and I, uh, I levitate everywhere. That was anticlimactic. I'm just gonna go home now, I guess. So, how you durins? Flish, how do you think I'm durins? I tried to step outside of my comfort zone and get a hobby outside of being in a mobile weeb, and it ended up being a disaster, of course. Alright, I mean, yeah, that was pretty bad, but it was all stuff outside of your control. Except for the bear trap thing, which was just... I don't even know what the fu- Anyways, the weather is f***ed out there right now, but if you still want to try making fishing a hobby of yours, maybe you could try Sega Bass Fishing? Sega- You mean that game I heard you screaming at in the boat for half an hour? Sounds awful. Oh yeah, no, I hated it, but you care about fishing, so here, just play it. <sighs> Alright. Oh, what's this? I gotta check with my doctor before playing this sh**. Man, f*** that. My doctor placed a restraining order on me. I can't talk to her. <laughs> See you later, man. I'm gonna just go do some more Japan stuff. What? Dude, it's a stupid bullshit warning. It doesn't matter. Nope. <laughs> oh, no. I'm out of here. I'm not playing any- Huh? The hell is that? Uh, dude, this thing says you spent $2,000 on Sega Bass Fishing Steam version arcade mode continues? Who wants to frantically dig their fingers through their wallet searching for coins just to continue their Sega bass fishing playthrough? Screw that, I'll continue for free 8,000 times. I'm not paying Sega sh**. <laughs>